Hello, I'm all the way over here this week, and that's because I'm using OpenDog as a table to put the breakfast making machine on. So OpenDog is an ongoing series, check that series out in my channel. I'll be doing some more updates when I've got something significant to show, and there's quite a lot of work going on in the background. Also check out the other robots I've built, including Robot X the bipedal robot, and the real working exosuit and giant Lego electric skateboards and loads of other stuff. Don't forget to buy Open Dog t-shirts and other merchandise, the links are in the description below, and you can also support the channel through Patreon. And if you don't like Patreon, I now have YouTube channel membership, so just click on that join button below. So last time we made a machine that made the perfect boiled egg, or thereabouts, and didn't break any plates. Last time we did foods that need to be boiled, and now we're gonna do foods that need to be toasted, and we're gonna make an automated sandwich toaster to do toast, and also some meat products. Right, so now we've made this gantry which slides like this on V wheels and it's got two holes attached to the coolers here which hopefully the toast oven feet should fit perfectly in there if I've done it right. Yes, there we go and the toaster oven's got non-slip feet so the whole thing shouldn't slide around and this piece now hopefully fits just over the door. There we go, so that means we can make a thing to grab the tray, wheel it back and flip the contents out and also allow the door to shut so we can preheat the oven. So I've put these two servos mounted on here now which slide backwards and forwards and I've made this test fork out of plastic. Eventually it'll be made of metal because the plastic one will melt of course but this is the sort of thing so we're going to fit one on each side so those can flip over like that and grab the tray. So hopefully with the door open and this fork on here we can stick this directly between these grill rack things and we can winch this in, lift the tray slightly, obviously on both sides, put it out and then flip that right over to chuck the contents out or move it so we can clear the door. And of course we need to automate the door as well so it can open at the right time. And we also need to automate this. The other thing we need to do ideally is uh, be able to turn this knob, which is the timer, which makes a satisfying ping when it's finished. So obviously we could um, automate turning it on and off electronically, but I quite fancy not hacking the mains really for this project. So I'm going to make a big lever on here with a cam that turns it, sets the time, and obviously then it's impossible to leave turned on, because eventually it counts down and turns off anyway. So we've got these forks attached on servos now, which of course hinge up and that allows the door to be opened. And then we can put these down. Obviously they'll both be uh, coordinated together and in exactly the right place to go in there and catch that tray. And then we can pick them up a little bit to take the tray out. And we can also flip it all the way over to tip the contents out onto the plate when it's done and also open and shut the door. So you'll notice there's also another piece that's appeared which is this lovely stick here. And that is just a plastic lever that's attached around the knob there, which means I can push the thing down or pull it back up. And I've just got a bit of rubber matting in there, some of that non-slip mat. And I've got a thing that's tightened down with a nut and bolt to clamp that on there. So there's gonna be a cam on the side here on a servo that pushes this down. And obviously we could either hold it in place or we could just let it go and then it will count down the timer on its own or we could have extra time by holding it for a bit longer.
I've now got a motor with a pulley on in this corner and we've got a 10 turn pot attached which turns around 10 times and we can read that with the analog in of an Arduino. At the back there's going to be another pulley to hold the other end of the string and the middle will be coupled to the axis here which moves back and forth so it's very much like a 3D printer axis. I would use a belt with a tooth pulley but I haven't got any belt so I'm just going to use a piece of string for now and that should give us the position so we can move this wherever we want. We've got one last mechanism which is to open the door which is another servo with a big lever attached to it. And that sticks just behind the door and it should push it up and down. And I've got just another little bushing to put on the other end of the bit of studding there just to support it. And this one screws onto the 2020 here. So that should work pretty well, I think. I had to 3D print a NinjaFlex sock to go on that pulley so it grips the string properly, but it works pretty well now. So if we just put some power on that, we should be able to make that axis move and that works quite well. So now what we need to do is just sort out some electronics to control everything. We're using quite a similar setup to last time with an Arduino Mega in a little box and it's got an LCD display and some buttons on there. This time we've got the motor driver mounted in here and we've got a 5 volt regulator to power everything that's 5 volts including the Arduino. And we've also got a Turning G battery eliminator circuit which um, gives us 6 volts at 5 amps for all the servos. And the reason I'm using Arduino Megas in all this electronics is because they've got lots of serial ports and that means we can have one master module at the end which basically talks to all the others on those spare serial ports and still gives us a debug port over USB. So eventually the aim will be to have some sort of robot arm that puts the food in at the top, puts the eggs into the other part of the module and any other modules we make and that can sync the whole machine together. So I've just got the position sorted out for all the servos and I can test those by sending characters down the serial monitor for now so that we can just test um, if it works or not so I can move my... Uh forks all around there to move the tray so if we open the door there we go and then we can go and put those down move the thing in lift it up a little bit bring it out again tip the food away go and put it back in and we can also shut the door and set the timer. There we go. So that seems to work pretty well. So the next thing to do is build a state machine so that we can have buttons on here that we press to start and stop. It requests to put food in at the right time and everything happens automatically. But before I can show you it working, I need to tell you about the sponsor for this video. And this video is sponsored by Honey. Nobody wants to feel like they're wasting money online, but did you know there's an easier way to get the best price? It's called Honey, which is a free browser extension. Honey finds the best promo codes for you and you can install it in just two clicks. This means you always get the best prices at over 37,000 sites online, including eBay, Amazon, Walmart, Urban Outfitters, and many, many more. I've been using Honey for a while, and I've saved lots of money, including 15% on memory cards at Jessup's, which is something I use all the time for filming with DSLRs. It's easy to install Honey, just go to joinhoney.com slash jamesbruton and you can install it in just two clicks. Honey has over 10 million members, on average each person has saved over $28. It's got over 100,000 plus 5 star reviews on the Google Chrome store and Time Magazine called it basically free money. So there's literally no reason not to use Honey for everything you buy online. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash jamesbruton. That's joinhoney.com slash James Bruton. So what we've got this time in terms of code is very similar to last time. We've got a state machine built of if statements, and on every if statement it either checks a timer or it checks a button press. We haven't got a temperature sensor like we did for the egg boiling machine that was built into the state machine last time. And there's other ways to do this, including case and switch, but if statements are very easy to follow if you're new to coding. But I've put all the CAD and the code in the description to this video, so if you want to have a look or use it for another project, then feel free to do so, or make your own breakfast making machine. But now it's time to see if we can actually cook some food. Right, so the machine's ready to go, and on the display it says press red to start, so let's press that. And we should find it sets the timer and it turns the oven on, and I've got a 30 second preheat. And you'll notice a little thing counting down on here, which is saying the, the uh, amount of seconds there. And eventually it should get to 30 and then um, we'll be ready to cook the food. I'd probably preheat the oven for longer than that in reality. But for the purposes of the demo, we've just got 30 seconds. So there we are. We're getting there now. All the way up. There's a Phantom 1 on the end. I should have cleared the display before I started. That actual timer is a variable that counts no matter what it's doing. And if you leave it, it just counts up forever. That's why there's an extra digit on the end. So now the tray's ready and it says insert food. So now we're going to take the finest American hot dogs 
and we're going to put them in here. Right. We could put toast in, some bread or anything else that needs cooking in a toaster oven. There we go, those smell lovely. So now I'm ready to cook the food. So um, ideally a robot arm will put that in that will um, also put the egg into the egg making machine and dip some, a tea bag in some water to make tea. So let's press that again. And it should load the food in the oven, there we go. And hopefully shut the door. And at that point it takes the thing off to let the timer tick down. So you might be able to hear just about the timer sound. And obviously we could hold this for longer till later in the process so we could get a longer timer or we could turn the cam around less so it doesn't push it down so far or put a bigger cam on. And again, we're just cooking for 30 seconds. So let's see what that's doing. 23, 24, still got that floating one. Should have cleared the display, but there we go. There's always improvements. And when we get to 30 seconds, then the food's all done. And it should take it out. What happens next? Yep, I uh, caught them. One ended up under there. There we go. I probably need some sort of ramp here to take the food. But we've got the sausages. They're not cooked because they've only been in for 30 seconds. But the machine does work and it shuts the door and it goes back to the beginning. There's the other one. There we go. Not cooked sausages. But there we go, we could increase those timers and we could cook it for longer, like cook it properly. The timer's still counting down, eventually... Oh, the ping is broken. Oh well. Eventually it stops. So I hope you enjoyed that. Next time I'm going to be making the dexterous coordination unit, which is going to be an arm that puts the food into the top of the machines, and then later on we'll deal with getting the food out of the bottom of the machines and putting it onto your plate. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks again to Honey for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check the link out in the description so they know that you really like this video and you watch me. Also, like and subscribe to my channel. Alright, that's all for now.